Hey, what's up, guys? Toogie here, back again with another episode of my Seattle Sea Cattle franchise mode series. You know what it is at this point, or perhaps, as some might say, you know what it was. As in the last episode, we waved the white flag and we went into. We really kind of transitioned to a different stage of this series. Of course, the catalyst being that we ended up getting the third overall pick after missing the playoffs. And that allowed us to get a high-end talent in Bear Packard. From there, perhaps more controversially, of course, would have been me trading up to make sure I could get Nesbitt as well. Of course, on a more negative note, he didn't end up being elite potential. That backfired, but he may still end up being a crucial part of this team, depending on how quickly he develops. There's certainly a big question mark surrounding that right now. So obviously, we left the initial stage, as I said, of this series, where, again, the goal, of course, of a Draft to Glory series is to win without making any major free agent signings, without making any trades. We went all in in that last draft after that plan fell apart. It didn't work. I'm actually going to bring up the old calculator app here because I don't know if uh, we'll actually be able to get Wakabayashi on 85. Probably not seeing as it's the off-season uh, rather than mid-season, but it's still worth a shot right now, I'd say, because we'd be able to save quite a bit of money, be able to drop that down to about 7.8, which would be huge for us. But like I said, I know some people aren't happy with the last episode. That's fine, because I'm not happy with it either. I mean, again, that, episode's rep that episode represents... Uh, giving up on the original plan. And if we do win from this point on, it's not going to be the same, really. It's going to be knowing full well that, in a way, I mean, call it cheating if you want. I don't call it cheating because we openly admitted to giving up on that plan. We openly admitted to waving the white flag, and that's the term, you know, that's the term I'll keep using. Because really, that's what it was. Oh, God. Uh, you know what, Tanel? I will just sign you until the end of time, because I don't really plan on trading you anyway. Uh, we'll see if he's willing to accept that. Probably not, because he doesn't want to resign. but I'm hoping to get a tad bit lucky with some of these negotiations. We'll just see if maybe somehow it works out. I, I think you guys get the point. If you're still here, and you're still interested in this series, you know why we're still going on with this series. It is to try and get... Uh, the likes of Trent Bengoa and company, a Stanley Cup. Might not happen. Very well, uh, <laughs> uh, very well likely that it won't happen, really. I would say at this point, the odds are definitely not in our favor. Of course, we still have the majority of a team that missed the playoffs. Our core is older. There is no guarantee that this is going to work. I'm just going to sign Volk to a stupid contract. Why not? Just to get him signed, get that out of the way. He's going to be on this team until he retires anyway, so he's one of those guys that I don't see myself trading. Uh, Ham Hughes as well. Again, I don't expect many of these contracts to go through, but if just one or two of them go through, uh, that would be great. So again, we have our top nine. Uh, 10, 11, and 12. Counting is easy. Uh, we can drop Martinson. I don't think he's going to improve all that much. Yeah, you know, I'm going to drop Red and Maple. No, you know, I'm going to keep them. I'm going to keep all three of them. Just in case as somebody declines in quality, they might be able to step in and help out. Maybe. Doubtful, but maybe. <laughs> of course, we don't have any depth at this point after last episode. And, of course, we need to sign Bear Packard to his entry-level deal. So we'll see if we can get a little bit lucky with some of the negotiations there. Of course, this episode, it's mainly going to be simming through that next season, seeing what happens, and either next episode will be another draft, or it will be a playoff episode, as I didn't get lucky with any of those offers. <laughs> I'm not surprised, of course, but I had to hope that the game would be somewhat kind towards me. No, no, it wasn't <laughs> at all. No mercy. No mercy. All right, Hargrave, let's go... Uh... Let's go one year, one way, and 1. 1. 1.2, just to try and make sure that you sign. Uh, yeah, defensively, Wakabayashi did not accept the 85%, which isn't a surprise. I'm going to drop it to 8.5. Maybe we can get a little bit lucky. Uh, Tanel, I mean, 
damn. So let's go 7.8 over eight years. That might work. Nesbitt we're not going to sign. Jung is going to be frustrating to negotiate with, I'm sure. And then centers nobody accepted. So the cheapest way to sign Trent is a one-year deal. Let's go to 10.5. That probably won't be enough. Belfour, cheapest way was a one-year deal. Let's go right up to 3 million. There could be an outside chance of some cap issues here, so I'm going to avoid signing McChesney. 2.2 uh, for eight years for Volk works. Ham Hughes. Let's also go eight years, 1.8. That might work. Martinson declined, which is incredibly frustrating. Let's go one by one. And that should be that outside of McChesney. A couple of people signed, though, at the very least. Some of the depth rules. Uh, we're up to 40 or down to $48 million in cap space. We should be fine. Hopefully, <laughs> it would be nice to avoid. Uh, that uh, that specific problem. Trent rejected, Tanel rejected, Belfour's back, Hargrave rejected. Oh my god. All right, well, we re-signed two people, but of course, this is the problem that we always run into, especially when we don't find success in a series like this, and that is that everybody just wants a ridiculous amount of money. Hargrave, I have no choice but to pay you because I, I certainly can't run Leclerc as the backup. Wakabayashi... Let's just go, you know, four years. I'll, I'll offer him exactly what he wants. Maybe that'll work. Tommy Tennell. Again, it's continuing to be frustrating. Let's go eight and a half by eight years. That's still a pretty good price for him. Left wing Jung being this frustrating to negotiate with isn't worth it in the slightest. But again, we need that little bit of depth. Trent, let's go up to 11 for this one year. Which is crazy, but sure. McChesney, I'm still going to hold off on talking to. Volk, let's go up to two and a half. Hopefully that works. Ham Hughes. Ham Hughes, 2.25. Hope that works. Martinson. Again, you're just, you're so frustrating to negotiate with. Two and a half or one, two, five. And we'll see if that works. Please, for the love of God, let me get this team set up. I would hate to have to run. I mean, worst case scenario right now would be having too many players reject, which is still happening, by the way. We only have three days left. Imagine if I lose somebody to free agency right about now. We have $29 million left, so I'm starting to think the cap, uh, the potential cap trouble won't be a thing. I cannot believe Hargrave isn't signing. Like, you're going to just rot on the free agent list if you don't sign with us. It's ridiculous. At least Wakabayashi signed. Jung, I mean, one and a half is my top offer. If you don't accept that, you're gone because you're not a necessity. And then it centers Trent. <sighs> 12 million. 12 million for one season. Ridiculous, but it's what we have to do. Volk, let's go back to the eight years and we'll go 2.8 over eight years. McChesney, I'll send you an offer now. Uh, let's go 225 over two years, and that's good. All right, that's good. Oh, boy. The stress the stress of setting up this team. There shouldn't be any stress. We have very few players to resign, but nobody wants to stay. People see the writing on the wall. We have two players left to negotiate with. One's a little bit more crucial than the other especially with injuries off, but needless to say, we still need a backup goalie this year. Hargrave, for the love of God, can we just make this easy? Please, uh, $2 million. How about that? $2 million. You're asking for under $1 million in a two-way deal. If you don't accept this, I'm going to be a very unhappy boy. And Trent will go up to 13 mil. Why not? <laughs> Let's hope for the best. 13 million. For the now 88 overall, Trent Bengoa, 35 years old as well. That's what this series has become. Uh, Operation Get Trent a Cup. Of course, we're still only adding players through the draft. Free agency is not a factor, and oh my god. All right, well, this, uh, this could be bad. I'm obviously going to offer him every dollar that I possibly can. But could, oh my god, could you imagine... Could you imagine if Trent left? 
Uh, let's go... I don't want to go up into the 20s because there was that old glitch where you can offer them more money than the game recognizes. 19 and a half. If he doesn't accept this, then I, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. That's what this series is about, is getting Trent a cup. And for him, his best decision might be to leave. Thank God it isn't. Obviously not, I mean, thankfully he values the almighty dollar and generational wealth over, you know, winning cups. Because what are the odds that we actually pull this rabbit out of our hat and end up winning something? Potentially high with the addition of Bear Packard. Although, of course, we lost Sutter in the last episode to retirements. I don't, I don't know how to feel about this, man. Again, the, the pressure's on. We failed our initial goal. It's now about trying to win with the remaining members of this core. And really, we only had two additions. But of course, it was the lottery win, getting the third overall pick, on top of there being no clear steals later on in the draft as to why we went, which is the two-pick option, to trade up to five. Because I took a quick look, didn't see anybody that I thought would be a steal at least in terms of those potentials for the teams that we had available to us, that leads us down this path. It's the one thing. It's the one thing I like about franchise mode. Uh, we need to sign some players here. I'd rather just sign players on my own than have the game sign them for me. But it's the one thing I like about franchise mode this year, at the very least, is I don't think I've had a single series go the way that I thought it would go. If you, know, if you get what I mean, in terms of just curveballs that have been thrown my way. You look at the Goon Squad series and the addition of a certain draft pick that was never expected. Uh, that altered the course of that series. Uh, you look at certain RFA possibilities in other series that showed up. Uh, you look at you know, say the way the Hartford series went. That also factored in RFAs. Uh, the way the Montreal series went. It hasn't been predictable, at the very least. So, every episode to me, it seems like we take a turn uh, into a different direction. Whether or not that direction turns out to be the right one, well, you know, that's, that's always the question. Uh, I'm going to sign these three. I don't know if that'll be enough. If it's not, the game will sign players for me. It shouldn't be able to sign them to any kind of crazy contracts. We should be okay. But forward, defenseman, and a goaltender, hopefully that's good enough. If it does sign anybody, like I said, we have, what, $4 million left. Just my one concern would be whether or not it gives any of those players term and whether or not it's actually a half-decent player that I have to bury in the minors. Uh, but we are good to go for this next season. Team status right now listed as hopeful. And we'll see what it looks like if I optimize the lineup a bit. So goaltending is good. Defense is good. And of course, good in air quotes. And let's see. So we have these three. So one of these three gets to make it into the lineup. Martinson, Janik, and Redden. 85 offensive awareness for Martinson, who is not ours. Oh, that's right. I wasn't supposed to bring him back. Whoops. See, that's the one disconnect that can happen. We had to bring him back in a trade. So it's definitely Martinson getting sent down. Uh, sent down. It's between Janik and Redden, which I like. I mean, Redden has the advantage in puck skills. Janik has it in offensive awareness. Defense goes to Redden. Physicality goes to Janik. Skating is about even. Shooting goes to Janik. I think Manny wins. I think I think Manny Janik wins. So he will be joining this team. Lockhart's made it. Packard will be here. Uh, Packard hasn't improved beyond his initial draft overall, which isn't the end of the world. But let's see what we can do here. Lockhart's listed still as a minor league checking forward. Packard's listed as a fourth line guy. I might put Packard on the fourth line. Maybe. See, this is the tough call. Ham Hughes, low offensive awareness, uh, defensively oriented. Not a high offensive awareness for Bear Packard either with him being a two-way. So um, if we just look at offensive awareness as kind of the indicator of who should be in 
the top six. I think that's what we'd go with. And then the bottom six from there, like I said, we have Sidhu, McChesney, Janik. Oh, boy. What do we want to do here? What do we want to do here with those particular players? I think I want to reunite uh, the Rogalski bengoa Tanel line. Who's the better center? Falk is the better center. I think that's going to be our second line. Third line, what do we want to do here? Uh, what do we want to do? I mean, Lockhart has that little bit of potential left. McChesney still has a bit of potential left. I don't see him improving. I don't see McChesney improving at this point either. I just don't know if I should play Packard and Lockhart in their actual roles, basically. I think I'm going to. And McChesney being a third liner, I'm going to play him in his actual role as well. Let's go with something similar, or not even similar. Let's go with something like this, I think. So we're going to go Ham Hughes, McChesney, Sid, who Janik, Packard, Lockhart on the fourth line. Is this the strongest team that we've ever iced? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it's what we have at this point. I think these will be the combos going forward. Oshi still a 91. We'll see what happens from there. The one downside goaltending-wise is that uh, Rodrigue is going to be above LeClaire. Not too concerned about that. This is the team. What this team is capable of, I don't know. Whether or not the team could be a little bit better optimized via player types, maybe, maybe not. Captaincies are still set the way I'd want them. There, There is that argument, of course, of player types. Some people think it does something, others don't. You know, if we were to optimize that a little bit, maybe it would lead to some more wins. Maybe, maybe not. Regardless, this is the team. Can we make the playoffs this year after missing out the prior season for the first time in a long time? Are we going to be, are we going to be back in the playoffs, or... Is it truly over? <laughs> As in, our chances to pull this off? Uh, will the addition of Bear McCann, will it simply not be enough? Will the retirement of Sutter, combined with the regression of some of the other members of our core, is that going to be too much to overcome? Could very well be the case. It's looking like we're probably going to finish at either 6 and yeah, it's going to be 6 and 1 or. 5-2 and two in the preseason, ends up being 5-2. and two. It's not a terrible sign, but we obviously have a long way to go, and we start the season off with a 4-0 shutout victory over the Tampa Bay Lightning, followed that up with a 4-1 loss to Minnesota. I expect us to be kind of that 50-50 middle-of-the-road team, but much like the run against Winnipeg, all we need to do is sneak in. That run... Ended up going to the conference final, losing to Winnipeg. We were, what, the 8th seed? Maybe the 7th. I'm 99% sure we were the 8th seed. I know we were a wild card team regardless. No hopes. No hopes whatsoever. No hope whatsoever in that postseason run of being successful. We almost pulled it off. So if we can get into the playoffs, we have a chance. It's just whether or not we can find that consistency in the regular season. Tacoma is awful. So uh, if you <laughs> if you needed an update on the question of will the Evergreens ever find success, no. No, they will not. Not even close. <laughs> it's not going to work out for the Tacoma Evergreens. Uh, probably the least successful AHL team we have ever had in any of my series, which again, I try to maintain a relatively successful AHL club with high-end prospects, you know, to keep that prospect factory going, uh, with the limited player base that we have had, uh, you know, to our, uh, to our disposal, it, it, ha it's, it was never going to happen, <laughs> it certainly hasn't, uh, let's see what we can do here, it's going to be goaltending, they did say it was a weaker draft, but I mean, is that just a weaker draft in general? Then again, the WHL typically has the higher end talent out of any other out of any other region. The WHL typically has higher end talent, so it might have been the right move. I mean, if we miss the playoffs and end up with the top five pick, then maybe it wasn't the right move. But time will tell. We still have this season to sim through. We are just under five hundred. And now a little bit further under 500. 
Ah, oh, Tacoma's gone on a little bit of a winning streak, though. <laughs> so we, oh, we talk about how badly they suck and they start winning games. So the Sea Cattle, you're terrible. I hate you. You suck. Stop playing hockey. Just fold as a team. Okay, it hasn't worked. We've lost three straight games. Oh, God. Is it too little too late? Is it too little too late for this team? I'm starting to fear that it might be. It's only mid-January. But being 18 and 23 combined is not what we were looking for. And I think I'm going to maybe make some lineup changes here. That's I probably shouldn't sit idly by at this point. And I might have even waited for too long. So we lose to the LA Kings. Where are we in the standings? Uh, we're on 39 points. And it takes... Oh, God. We're 10 points back of the Oilers. Wild, wild, yeah, we're... Wow. We're 10 points out. We are 10 points out in the middle of January. That top line doesn't have it anymore. Second line's okay, but Volk and Belfour aren't really big point getters. So we're going to reunite that line. Yeah, we're going to reunite that version of the top six. And the bottom six has been pretty rough. The third line's been a little bit better. I'm going to drop Hamhuis for Packard. Just because they're relatively even in points. Defensively. O'Donnell's killing it. Parker and Bishop just not. Very much not killing it. So let's go. Let's melee. Let's go with melee and O'Donnell. Let's go with Reza and Wakabayashi. Let's not go with Reza and Wakabayashi. Who's done better between Bishop and Parker? That's subjective, of course. We'll go Bishop and Wakabayashi, Reza and Parker. And goaltending, how's Oshi done? Oshi's still doing well. He is the only reason why we're even close. I mean, again, you look at his stats. Say what you want. Julian Oshi has been, and I've said this a few times this season, uh, in, in this series, this throughout NHL 18, if you were to have to choose the best goaltender I've had, you would have a hell of a choice between goaltenders that we have had whether it's Brodeen, Petrolinen. Like, if I, were to, if I were to ask you guys, and I'm going to, of course, we have the whole Hall of Fame for each series. At the end of NHL 18, we're going to have the, you know, basically the team of NHL 18, right? Where all the Hall of Famers are then, it, it's up for a debate as far as the first team. You know, who, who makes up the best team uh, from all the series combined that we've had in NHL 18? I think you're going to have a hell of a time trying to choose goaltenders. I think Oshi has quietly been amongst the elite. I mean, he has been right up there with any other goaltender we've had. Um, I still can't help but think uh, that it might go to uh, a certain goaltender in the in the Goon Squad series, maybe a certain goaltender in Hartford. But I don't know. Will the lack of success lead to Brodeen not, or uh, lead to Brodeen, lead to Oshi not getting any votes because right now it's not looking too good. It's going to take one hell of an effort over the next month and a half for us to make it. It's not looking too good. 24, 28, and 4. We need to start, if we're going to be losing games, we need to start losing them more in the overtime and shootouts, but... I don't know. I'm I'm extremely concerned here. It's not looking good. We're starting to pick up a little bit of momentum. Still, you know, close to the win-loss, win-loss trade-off. But if we just start winning some more games here and there, start getting those pity points, we might have a chance. But knowing that we were 10 points back, that's incredibly scary. If we miss out this season, can we possibly think that we're going to make it next year? at least in a realistic sense, knowing that we're going to have a bit more regression, knowing that Trent Bengoa could retire. He's 35. He's still a great overall, but he could retire this season. This could be his final year. That's a, that's a realistic... That's, that's a reality we could soon be facing. That's a highly realistic possibility. But we are picking up a little bit of momentum here. 
Come on. What an effort. What a what a winning streak that just ended. There we go. We lost in a shootout to Dallas. Again, if we're going to lose, pity point. We've lost three straight games, though. Make it four straight. Snap that streak against Arizona. I'm going to stop the sim here. We lost four to nothing to LA. 34, 33, and six. Where are we in the standings? How far out of a playoff spot are we? Oh my God, we're on 74 points. We're four points back of Vancouver with nine games to go. A wild card team has 79 points. We're four points out. We are four points out because of this great run over the past month or so. Aside, of course, from the losing streak here in mid-March. We are four points out. We could possibly sneak in. We could do this. We could do this. I Oh, man, do I make lineup changes at this point? Or do I stick with the team that's been able to win games? If I make lineup changes, maybe we do even better. What do we do here? That top line, of course, not much of a top line. I'm going to switch them with the Jonas Rogalski tanel line. Trent's down to an 86. Oh, my God. Third line, I feel like they've been a little bit better. I think we're going to leave it that way. And then defensively, what are we dealing with? So Reza and Wakabayashi, but we know we can't use Parker and Bishop together. I'm going to swap those two. And then goaltending. Hargrave's been great so far this season, and Josh Oshie has been Josh Oshie. He's been amazing. Can we pull this off? I'm going to check the power play and the penalty kill just to see if that's worth flipping around as well, which I'm sure it is. But we could pull this off. Nine games to go. We're not out of it. Power play percentage. We're not near the bottom. Where the hell are we in terms of power play? Middle of the road? Middle of the road. Okay, that's not terrible. Our penalty kills at 81%, which is towards the bottom. Okay, so we'll change up the uh, we'll change up the penalty kill. We'll do everything we can here. To try and make sure that we somehow make this happen. So let's see. Special teams. Penalty kill. Ham Hughes, Packard. Falk, Rogalski. Who are the best players that we could use here? Uh, so Rogalski, Tanel, Ben Goa, and Packard or Sidhu. It's going to be Packard. Actually, well, Packard, Sidhu, Lockhart could work. Packard, Sidhu, Lockhart, or we just use the... Uh, the big three. Oh, man. Let's go Packard, Sidhu, Lockhart, Ben Goa on the penalty kill. So, again, Packard. So let's add Ben Goa. Where is Sidhu? Left wing? Right wing. Packard, Sidhu, Ben Goa, and the, uh, the other four-star defenseman or for the four star defensive category was Lockhart that works and then defensively I mean we're probably fine I'm gonna go O'Donnell and Reza Wakabayashi and Mele that's pretty much a disaster uh, so we'll go Packard and Ben Goa as the centers and let's go ahead and uh, flip that back around and we should be okay there that's an improvement on paper at least and then power play-wise, power play-wise, Jesus, yeah, we, we need to make changes there. We need to make changes there. So we have, who's the one guy? Valk. Valk needs to be in instead of Sidhu. It's a little bit more offensively gifted. So let's go with Valk. And then Parker, I'll probably take out instead for Bishop. And we'll run... Let's go with uh, let's go with that setup right there. That works, maybe. Actually, mm, you know what? You know what? Let's put Rogalski there as well. So we'll go Jonas Bengoa to now Rogalski O'Donnell, and we'll go with an extra defenseman at forward. As crazy as that sounds, just trying anything that I can here to see if that works. But those are our best offensive talents. It's worth throwing something unorthodox at the wall. You know, anything we can at the wall. An unorthodox approach. It's worth going forward with that to try and make this happen. 
Let's see what happens here. San Jose, can we at least, yes, I was going to say, can we at least lose in a shootout? 3 nothing victory. We're playing Winnipeg. That's a tough game. Montreal's a tough game. Let's see what happens. Eight games left in this season. Winnipeg's a 3 nothing loss. Montreal's a 4-3 win. Final game of March. It's a winnable game against Ottawa. Can we do it? Can we get a major victory here? We can't, but we lose in a shootout. Five games left. 36, 34, and 7. Where are we now? We are one point back of Vancouver with five games to go. 84 points in the wild card. It's between us, Vancouver, Edmonton, and Arizona. Who is going to take that third spot to more than likely play Calgary, although the Flames could still catch the Sharks? We have to sneak into the three spot. That's the only way. And we're playing a game here against Philly that is absolutely winnable. Come on, we need a win here, we need a win, we need a win. Yes, 4-2. to two. Right, we're playing a very tough Florida team. We're playing a very winnable game against the Islanders, an extremely tough game against Columbus, and a very winnable game against Vegas. If we win 3 out of 4, we should get this. If we're going to lose, damn it, at least lose in overtime. Playing Florida... 2 nothing shutouts. Damn it. Three games left. Where are we right now? Three games left this season. Can we just sneak in? We're on 81 points. It takes 82. Edmonton, though, have played two more games. We're one point back still of Vancouver. Same amount of games played. We have to win here against the Islanders. We have to. That's it. That's it. Unless Vancouver slipped up. You can't lose to a team that was sub-30 wins or at 30 wins on the season. I think that's it. Yeah, Vancouver's on 84 points. We have to win both games now. Damn it. We're going to fall just short. 47 win Blue Jackets. And that'll do it. The Seattle Sea Cattle end the season with a 7 nothing victory. Over the Vegas Golden Knights, but it's too little too late. Three consecutive losses and losing four out of our last six. Erases what was a great comeback through February. The Vancouver Canucks survive. They will play the Calgary Flames. And the Sea Cattle have to prepare for an off-season of uncertainty. We finished one point behind Vancouver. If we had won either of those three, you know, any of those three losses, but particularly against the Islanders, we would have made it. We were that close, and now we face, as I said, an off-season of uncertainty. Will we lose Trent Bengoa? Will we lose, I mean, I can't even think of some of the ages here, but you see Trent down to an 86. I, I don't know what's going to happen in this next episode, guys. We're going to end it here so that hopefully uh, we can come back in the next episode with a little bit of positivity. But our season is over. The 2036-37 season. And we fell just short.